Welcome everyone. In this video we're going to cover the equals overloading operator as part of the stack class and we'll discuss three friend functions that will overload the double angle bracket operator, the double equals operator, and the not equals operator. So first let's start with the equals operator and actually before we continue I'd like to think about the application of using the equals operator so if we have the example of a equals 5 one thing that can one observation is that a is equal to but the left hand side of the equals operator and 5 is equal to the right hand side of the equals operator and the idea here is that when we're overloading the equals operator the internal class is going to be the left hand side and the right hand side is going to be the argument of the equals operator so let's reflect that so we're going to be returning a stack data to the left hand side and we're gonna overload the equals operator and on the right hand side we're gonna take a reference to a stack of data and actually let's just call it right hand side so one thing that um, we should account for is that what happens if it's an empty stack well if it's an empty stack let's take a local variable and create a size for it I'm going to say RHS size is equal to right hand size if the right hand side size is equal to zero well what we'll do is that we'll set the size to zero we can do while not empty we're going to pop Right here, we'll empty out our stack. Okay. So, if we're copying an empty stack, we need to make sure that we call the right function, which is pop, to ensure that the left hand side becomes a uh, empty stack itself. We don't want to, how should I say? it would be difficult to we need to make some assumptions on the stack to see how we can clear it all out but if we enter a wall loop and say well it's not empty we're gonna keep popping off the stack it's a safe way to clear it out because we're going to keep popping off the stack until it is empty and once it is there we're good we'll consider the other case if it's not empty so we'll say else if and we need to consider if it's size 1. So if the right hand size is equal to 1, what we'll do is that we'll take a copy of it. So we'll say value copy. And we'll take a copy of values on the right hand side. Since the right hand side only has one value in its pointer, we just need to dereference it. So in this case, we need to check if our own size is less than 2. If it's less than 2, well, we need to delete our own. Right, so if we're going to override everything, we need to delete our own internal data. Otherwise, we're going to do the array version. we got to put an S here. Right, so now what we need to do is that since it's a dynamically allocated variable, we need to dynamically allocate just one data for it. New data, and we're going to initialize, initialize it to value copy. Set the size to 1, and it's successfully copied. Right, with one caveat. We need to delete our temporary variable Oh no, data copy static. Never mind. Ooh. It's static, so we don't need to worry about it. Now we need to consider the case where the size is more than one. Right? So we consider when the stack is empty, so we make ours empty. 
then what we do is if it's one we take a copy of the right hand side which will be a theme throughout copying this over and we delete our own internal data which is the left hand side we reallocate it and we set the size to one and in the reallocation we take the data copy and we initialize our left hand side with the data that was on the right hand side right so now let's go to the case where it's an array so it's very important that we take a copy of this data and for the equal sign is much more it is much more important to take a copy of the data say than the copy constructor so I'll say data data and allocate um, a size for it and I'll say right hand size and we'll copy the data over from the right hand side to the left hand side and I'll say where's oh wait right hand side size I plus plus so we'll do data copy plus I equals the right hand side values plus I right so what this will do is we're going to take a copy of the right hand side and store it into our own local copy called very cleverly data copy so now we're gonna now that we have a copy of our data we need to go through the process of clearing the left hand side's data so if our size is less than two we're going to delete values otherwise we're going to go for the array version and delete it that way so delete values right so now we need to reallocate the data because we've we've deleted it we freed the memory now we need to reallocate the data for the left hand side so values is going to be equal to new data to the right hand sides right so whatever was in the left hand side now it's gone now it's destroyed now we can start anew and we do start anew by reallocating the data and the, the size of the data is important we make sure it's the right hand side so that we can safely copy the data from the right hand side to the left hand side and that's what we'll do with this for loop right so our own internal values variable will be copied with the data copy right and so now the data has been successfully copied from the right hand side to the left hand side so we need to set our size equal to the right hand side size and we should delete our local copy data copy and I need to delete it in its array form right so we considered all three cases for the stack and its different sizes and how we copy over that data so now all we need to return is itself and it'll be converted to the left hand side and the important thing here and and why it's important to take a copy of the d data is what happens if I do something like if I have stack um, int I call it a uh, thing right I do some stuff like thing push five thing push eleven right so now we have a stack so what happens if I do thing equals thing 
right let, if we go through this code if we do thing equals thing if I don't take the copy of the d data and I delete the data without taking a copy if I try to copy the data directly I'm going to get an error because as soon as I delete the data the data on the right hand side is going to be freed so that means I can't directly copy it right away this is really important in taking a copy for the data because if I don't I run the risk of if I set it equal to itself that I'll delete the internal data itself before I can copy it over so this is why I take a local copy of the data this is playing it safe so just in case you know either I get tricky or some sort of hacker gets tricky right and they try to do something like this to break the program they can't because I'm playing it safe by taking a copy of the data so this is concluding the equals operator and from here we're going to create our friend functions so I'm gonna say template class s let's go back give it a space make it nice and clean we're gonna say friend standard o stream we're gonna return a reference to the o stream and standard o stream for those that don't know is the output type of standard c out so we're gonna overload the operator double angle brackets and we'll have two arguments standard o stream thinking too much about c out which I'll call out right and out is a st standard o stream is the data type of standard out and we'll have a copy of our stack so it's a stack make it constant so that way nothing changes and I'll call it very cleverly stack with a lowercase s and I'll take a copy of our template thing uh, template line here and I'll say friend and now we'll do the equals operator which in which we'll compare two stacks and I'll say const stack s and I'll say the left hand side we'll compare the left hand side of one stack with the right hand side of another and this will look extraordinarily similar to the not equals actually not only will it look very similar it's exactly the same so now I've declared my friend functions and this will actually be the end of the class so when we're declaring friend functions they have to be just declared inside the class and implemented outside of it so we'll start implementing this first oh well let's start with the double equals operator so this should be quite analogous to the print function and then and by the way when we implement it we do not need the friend keyword anymore the friend keyword is just enough to keep when you just declare the function now that we're implementing it we actually don't need the friend keyword anymore but now let's look at the equals operator and this should be very similar to our print function I actually think the print function does a lot of the heavy lifting for us so why don't we take a look at that and copy it over so what do we need to change right so we still need to take the size of it because we still need to look at the stack I mean the size of the stack and we still need to iterate through the entire stack to see um, to iterate through all the values so that we can print all the values of the stack but now instead of using an internal argument we'll be using our external argument very cleverly called stack but we're not going to be outputting to standard C out no we have an input just called out that we can look at right and in and after out gets all of this stored well all that's left is just to return it so what's really nice is that the print function 
has already done a lot of the heavy lifting for us. We just need to convert it and make it a little bit more generalized. So now, let's see, let me copy this over, make it easier for me so we can call the not equals operator. So with the equals operator, we need to check if every single element of the stack is equal on both sides. So the left hand side, each element needs to be equal to the right hand side. Well first, what does that rule out? Well, if the left hand side's size is not equal to the right hand side size, then there's no way they can be the same. So we'll return false. Now if they are the same size, we do run the possibility that they could be the same. So uh, there's really just one way of checking if all the values are the same, is that we have to go into the stack and check the values one by one. So we'll need another for loop. And, whoops, size t. So I'll just say s size. <clears throat> s size is equal to, and we'll take the left hand size. And I just say s size because if they are not equal, we're going to exit out of the function. So if we get to this line, if we get to line 209, we only get to that case if the sizes are equal. So I can do the left hand side, or if I wanted to, I can do the right hand side. It doesn't matter. For this, I'll just do the right hand side. So here we got to check if when we dereference the left hand side of values plus i, if this is not equal to the dereference of the right hand side of values plus i, right, we give it the same shift. This is analogous to, if we, if we think of them as arrays, of saying if um, left hand side dot values of i is not equal to right hand side dot values of i. Right? It's analogous in that regard. But if they're not equal, well, we're also going to return false. Right? If they're not equal, it's going to return false. Because we need to keep checking and keep checking and keep checking if they're not equal. And if this piece of code is never ran, meaning the if statement, then we're going to be able to get out the while loop. So that means if we get out the while loop, then every case of this if statement is wrong, meaning they are equal. If they are equal, well, we can just simply return true. And that'll be it for this function, which is pretty crazy. Um, right, we have to do some sort of linear comparison. Right, here we can't make assumptions. We just don't know what's inside of the stack. So we need to use a for loop and brute force our way and check every single item with itself with the same offset. And if at any point they're not equal, we're done. We're out. It's over. But if we get to the end of the for loop, that means this is never true, which means they are equal which allows us to just put to return true. And if you thought that was difficult, well, this function is even more difficult. What we can just do is return the not of the left hand side equals the right hand side. Right. <laughs> this allows us to get the object flipped. So this is nice and clever. Oh, I love doing this. So here what I'm doing is that I'm checking if these two are equal. If this is true and they are equal, I need to return the opposite of this. Right? Which will show true for true or not for this. So I use the logic of the double equals operator and I flip its logic so that I can get the not equals operator. 
Isn't that great? Right, because here if this is equal, that means it's not equal. So if this returns true, I need to flip the logic because this should be false. If they're equal, it means they are not, not equal. Pretty snazzy, huh? This will end our lecture on the stack. And by no means, this is not a complete stack class. This does not have the total functionality of the stack. And there's more work to be done, more error checking to be done before we can consider this a full stack. In the next video, we're going to cover the conceptual basis of queues and talk about what makes it different. And by actually covering the stack, a lot of things are the same for queues. Um, the not equals operator, equals operator, the double angle brackets operator, as well as the equals bracket operator, are largely going to be the same operations. We'll just have to change the name of the data types and the variable names. Uh, stacks and queues are very similar, and we'll only have to accommodate for a few differences. Anyways, thanks.